Um, just to remind everyone that if uh, they're a small business or a business in the Midlands um, in the UK, uh, feel free to drop me a line and uh, you know we can help save you. All right, um, that's right. Uh, you're opening your um, new agency? Yeah, end of April. Um, in fact, you know, I'm available to talk to anyone now, but at the end of April, beginning of um, May, um, I'll be uh, available to, to all businesses uh, anywhere in the UK, but uh, especially in the Midlands, where I can provide you with a hands-on personal service. So that's interesting. What does um, an SEO charge? Well, what it, does an it, SEO charge, and what do you get for your money? Well, firstly, it's you know a lot of times here, yeah, Jim, where you get two different things. Um, you know, there's an ideal budget where, in your mind, based on what work needs potentially doing to that site, um, is very, very different to what small businesses can actually budget, you know, afford. So where you know agencies. Um, have like maybe three or four packages, for example. I mean, Dan mentioned the other the other uh, couple of weeks back when he started out. He did a a three hundred, a five hundred, a nine hundred a month package, and now they offer a one thousand, three thousand, and five thousand a month package. Um, yes, we 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 can offer these, obviously. Um, uh, but what I feel is that when you potentially offer a budget, you tend to limit yourself because um, or small businesses, especially in this economy, which is still quite tough, just simply can't actually afford these. So, you know, we always sit down and say, well, what do you want to achieve? And then this is my ideal be based on the amount of hours um, I could spend on your site per month would cost X amount. Uh, but then you get the turnaround going, well, cheapest, I really can't afford that. And all I can afford uh, budgetary wise, um, you know, starting out is let's say 300 a month. Um, then you need to revise and say, right, okay, based on that, let's look at this. These will be my priorities. Let's work our way through it that way based on your budget. Um, obviously, you decide on KPIs. Um, naturally, naturally traffic, but obviously in the first instance, it depends on the site health. So if I've done a, a crawl on the site, and let's say we've got a site looking with 30 to 40,000 errors sitting there, um, my first two or three months KPI might just be site errors. And then we reassess the KPIs based on traffic thereafter. Uh, and then conversions. Uh, you, you see what I mean? I, I tend not to look at rankings, but people love to look at rankings. Um, but, you know, you've got to prioritize things based on a person's budget, what they can specifically afford, and then and then move it forward logically. And communication, you know, you need to communicate. Um, I, th I think why I've retained some really long-term clients is because they can drop me an email pretty much at any time. Um, and, and, and we can sort it out and, and, and chat it through where a lot of SEOs go, well, listen, you know, if you phone me, you're going to be paying for that call. <laughs> um, mm. Yes, in a way you are, but, you know, you still you still, you still still got to create a relationship. The, the better I understand you, the better I understand your motives and your business, the better I can help you, you yeah. know, achieve those. I noticed you during a hangout tonight. Um, you've taken a couple of emails and, and phone calls um, from clients calling in. What does the average client call you to ask? Well, um, I mean, today I had um, two emails. Pretty much, you know, it, it really does vary. Um, I'll get things like, hey, Tim, have you seen that this guy's jumped up one position? And it's like, okay, calm down. Let's have a look at why. You do a little bit of digging and say, hey, you know, he's just he's just done um, an interview in 
um, you know, in the newspaper. Uh, and he's got these citations flowing through, which has bumped him up. Um, so if you can explain, or at least explain the best you can, you know, people understand it. And in also another way, that's great, because then that spurs them on. Because you've been saying to them for a couple of months, hey, listen, we need to get some offline marketing going here. Um, and then it spurs, the, spurs them on. Um, but I've also had a couple of issues today with, oh, you know, I've just been trying to load these images up on my site. I just don't know. Don't. Even though I'm not a web designer, um, they still they still you know, a client, and if I can help, I will help. Um, so yeah, you know, just sorting out an image, things like that. And I've also had another one today who's working on um, some content for his site, and I've just had to um, stop what I'm doing to go in, look at it, say, yeah, great. Let me just tweak that. Let me just uh, get a little link in there. Let's optimize that. Let's drop an H2 tag in there. And right, you're great to publish. Let's go for it. So, yeah. Excellent. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, do your clients ask you for any warranties? Uh, do, do they say, um, you know, you've got um, a week to be on position one, or I want to be on the first page of Google number one? Uh, yes, they do ask me that. All of them ask me that. How long is it going to take? How do you kind of, I just there's no way I can give any guarantee whatsoever. Um, you know, if Google if Google changes uh, changes the algo, you know, it makes an update 150 times a year. How possibly? Uh, and if they make any two or three major updates in the year. Do we really know what's going to happen? Do we know how? Um, no, uh, offer no guarantees uh, <laughs> whatsoever. Um, you know, all I do say to them is, look, you need to give something at least a minimum of a six-month run um, before you can really start seeing any form of... Uh, obviously, I would like to have things increasing because ideally, as you work your way through, you're fixing errors and you're working on the site from day one, but um, I always said to them, look, at least give it six months, um, you know, d before you make a yes or no decision on there, and I always have it uh, initially on the start, I always have a six-month um, period, um, because ideally, you know, if you think about, uh, you know, you try and equate it to, to on, uh, offline, one decent magazine published article or even advert is going to set you back 250 quid which will only last in a magazine for one publication um, so pretty much if, if you consider what that will do for you compared to someone actually you know spending time building up uh, online relevance you know, you, you you can kind of start equating that um, in terms of one crappy little ad, which may or may not get anyone picking up the phone, depending on where they distribute it to, or does the magazine just sit in a doctor's office for the next 20 years? Uh, you know, you've got to equate these things. Um, it does take time. Uh, certainly does. I always say you're not really going to see much happening for the first six months. Ideally, we, we do want to think, but you're not going to see anything drastic going on. Um, depends what industry you're in. You know, sometimes we can we can just hit a winner straight straight off the bat. Um, and it all depends what, what you've done in the past that is going to hinder you or benefit you. Uh, you know, unfortunately I would say twenty percent of clients that pick up the phone to me have been uh, have been penalized. Mm -hmm. Is, is your mix um, a mix? Well, is your um, service, I should say, a mix of PPC and um, uh, SEO uh, yeah. and on-site yeah. or, or off-site? So, yeah. you know, we're, we're, I mean, I'm always looking for off-site opportunities. Um, so it all depends on the market space they're in. Um, if they're manufacturing and they've just produced something, um, like I said, I don't press releases online. Press releases go 
you know, get hand delivered. They are handwritten. Uh, well, you know, it's it's all done beautifully, and it's sent off to to industry experts offline. Um, because the way I find out is that anything's happening, I get if I sent out ten, I'll get five of them that'll actually rewrite the copy and uh, do a bit of research and work into it, and I get five beautifully, completely different, unique uh, articles coming back. Um, AdWords, yes, um, definitely, we do a mix there. Uh, ideally, the way you want to work it is we, we set a budget, so whilst we're fixing the site, they start to get traffic coming in. Whilst we're fixing it and working on the site, they're getting traffic coming in, but the way I like to work it is after, let's say, once we're once we're pretty comfortable with the site and we're starting to see some results, then I want to scale, try and scale down my AdWords to meet the increase of the. Do you see what I mean? So, as, as we as we're gaining organically, I'm trying to reduce the AdWords spend uh, because there's certainly a lot more that they can do with uh, even even offline with the PR company, uh, and it all depends on the industry, obviously. But yeah, I mean, we, we, we tend to do a nice, uh, a good mix. Right. With PPC advertising, do you do that as a, 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 on cost on the Google ad spend or uh, with an hourly rate? And, and no, no, with, like ad, uh, with AdWords, obviously, you know, I've got a management center, um, I, I don't, Obviously, for a small person, I don't have the cash flow to actually uh, to actually manage, um, you know, to, to deal with with any budget. So the um, I'll set it all up. They will it will be in their account. They will pay for it. Um, I'll manage it, and they, I charge a management fee um, of six percent of the cost. Right. I'm sorry, I, I missed that. How much of the cost? Six percent, which is like I mean, the industry average is ten. Um, but this can vary depending on the size of it, and I'm just talking about a, a normal sort of little campaign um, for a management fee. If I'm talking a massive brand campaign, um, I'm looking at anywhere between 10 and 15 percent of the spend. Yeah, I actually had a call Within, today. Yeah, sorry, go Within ahead. Your, Within your uh, uh, KPIs, uh, do you use? Uh, AdWords, like uh, the quality score, or um, do you uh, mix uh, SEO and uh, paid search? Actually, within my KPIs, I don't include my AdWords as such, um, and I haven't thought of that really. Uh, no, um, my KPIs tend to be uh, traffic, uh, tend to be traffic and conversions. Is um, um, oh sorry, uh, have any of your clients uh, ever been um, hit by or diagnosed with uh, uh, a hit from negative SEO? And if so, um, how did you handle it? Yeah, I had uh, one of the hotel chains. Um, uh, one of our hotel chains uh, did seriously uh, get affected by a negative SEO campaign. Um, we compiled the full list. Obviously, they were all disavowed, and um, we sent that list together with um, a um, notification to, to in Webmaster Tools to say what was going on, why we had added these to the disavow tool, um, and you know that we were notifying you. Um, it lasted for about three months and we were pulling in anywhere from the first first time we noticed it in webmaster tools we noticed an increase of almost 15,000 uh, you know links uh, the following month it shot up to another 20 odd and the following month um, uh, it went down to about another 9,000 and then it stopped so um, yeah, I, I, it, so it went for three months. It was quite intense, but we, we we listed them all, disavowed them all, and when we first noticed it, we did notify uh, the web spam team uh, of what was going on. 
uh, whether they even read it, I don't know, because we never got a confirmation back whatsoever, but it was added to the disavow tool. Um, the site never, uh, in, in SOAPs or anything, uh, never and was never affected that way. So whether the site was strong enough to withstand it, whether it was the disavow tool that you no know, followed it, I couldn't tell you because, you know, uh, I, I, I don't know. But yeah, we were on top of it, and I think I think in the long term, if we hadn't have watched the site and found those, I think the following because uh, I think this was around about the July. I would I would suspect with that amount of links over the three months in total, I think by the um, November penguin that that that, that came along. I think the, the site potentially would have been hit because there was, I mean, there was a substantial amount of links coming in. Um, but because we found it and disavowed them almost two months prior to, to, to the next penguin, I think, you know, that did the job. But yeah, you've got to be ever vigilant, especially with, your, with big brands. I haven't seen any attempts on any of my smaller clients whatsoever. It's uh, just been bigger brands. Yeah. Okay. Do you ever encounter resentment from the developers of, of the, the websites that you're looking after, R you know, rather than the owners of the sites, the, the people who actually do the development? Do you ever encounter that, and how do you deal with it? Yeah. Um, funnily enough, it tends to, tends to be the bigger agencies. Uh, smaller sites and the developers, you know, we've built a rapport over time. And in fact, um, you know, we actually collaborate on other projects all the time now. Um, I have developers phoning phoning me up saying, oh, listen, you know, I'm working on this other site and I've got this problem and how would I implement that not to blah, blah, blah. So, you know, we build up really good working relationships. It only tends to be the bigger brands who have employed the bigger develop development agencies that are the ones that have the serious attitude problem. Um, because they probably earn in, you know, ridiculous amounts, charging ridiculous amounts, and when you come along and say to them, "Listen, guys, this is just really substandard," <laughs> you, yeah, you, um, but you just got to keep chipping away. You, you know, the way the way I resort to that now is um, every 15 days I do a site check, I uh, report it, and I send it to direct to the developers, but I CC the the um, the brand manager or whoever I'm dealing with it within the particular brand. I CC them them in, and eventually, after two or three, the uh, the client will actually turn around to the developers and say, "Listen, you know what the hell's going on here, and you've got to sort this out." And begrudgingly, they they <laughs> you know they get on board. Um, but yeah, it tends to be the bigger brands, the overpaid developers who are screwing the client blind who do the substandard job. What's the worst uh, CMS platform you've encountered? Demandware. That's certainly the worst one I've come across. Actually, you, you broke up just, you said, was it demand, was it? Demandware. Demandware is the worst one I've come across. Um, What's the best? You know, I used to hate Magento. Uh, I really used to hate Magento, but as you get into it, um, I've actually found it to be a very, very competent uh, e-commerce platform. Um, uh, yeah, so I've actually, I actually. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like Magento. WordPress for an actual site, I think that's fantastic because that has um, longevity for a small business, whereas once you've got them on their feet um, and you part ways, you know, you've got the site into shape, you've got it where it's going, they understand what they need to do on a monthly basis. Um, it's, 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 it's easy for them to manage and it provides longevity for them because they can always build onto that platform and add to that platform as their business grows, as products grow. Um, 
so yes, uh, uh, you know, WordPress is a is a no-brainer, really. Small business owners get, say, let me just put a number on it, say 20 uh, uh, spammy emails a day uh, promising page one results on Google and maybe one phone call from, um, if it's not actually a partner of Google, they're, they're, they're Larry uh, Page's brother. Um, how do you counter that and, and, and how do you um, de develop new business in that environment? Yeah, it's a tough one. Um, you know, my clients have actually all been very good this year. Uh, last year, I did have a lot of them forwarding me the emails going, hey, look at this, what do you think? Um, and initially, I started out actually breaking down why all these things were completely wrong. Uh, eventually, I just said to them, guys, look, if you're using me, you've got to trust me. Um, uh, you know, after our, after our initial six-month period, uh, you can you can stop using me within thirty with thirty days notice. Feel free to go for it because you know the longer I sit there breaking down your site, defending what I'm doing against versus what you know the twenty dollar a month um, you know spam email is going to do is look you know you we're just wasting time. Um, but actually this year. Um, I haven't had a single email like that from any of my clients. So either the spammers are getting very slack, or they've um, <laughs> they're just ignoring them now. Do you ever wake up in the morning and say, "What the hell am I doing in this business?" Every day, Jim. <laughs> well, uh, just going back to uh, uh, the CMS question. Uh, and do you also use uh, frameworks like uh, Django or LiftWap? I, I personally not. No, I haven't. I, I, I haven't as, as such come across that. Okay. Going, you've derailed my train of thought there, um, Edwin. Yeah, you're yeah, you're sorry, responsible sorry. to come up with the next question now. <laughs> you were into oh. spammers, man. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. The Django is uh, uh, pretty popular these days. Huh? So. Yeah, yeah, but I haven't come across uh, the need, you know, at the minute. So you never Do know. You, it well, could be. You go. You never know. You know, each client, each client brings. You know, anyone that, that phones up. Everyone brings a different set of circumstances with them. Um, different businesses look, you know, occasionally you know, you'll get a client to come along and you really want to work with. Um, but honestly, you can say to them, listen, I have no understanding on how the hell your business works. Um, <laughs> and, and unfortunately, I don't think I could do you justice. You know, so in that case, um, I can help you with your PPC. I can help you obviously sort out the health of your site. But in terms of um, actually marketing it, marketing it, getting it out there, I have no idea what your market entails. And I and and from a you know from looking at it, and and I've always been honest. You know, if I can sort out the health of your site. I can help you out with PPC. Um, I mean, it's not very often, uh, but I have had the odd occasion where I've looked at a, a business strategy and said, I really don't know how as a business I can, once I've sorted out your site, take that forward for you. Because um, the, the content is way too complex, and I think there's only a few copywriters out there that could actually even tackle something like that. And I think that their results uh, and their costs would just be, you know, crippling. So either we'll sort this out, help, I will give you a content kind of strategy, but you as a small business is going to need to create that because you're so niche. And what I was, this was a research and development, for example, and I couldn't have sourced the content. It would have just been astronomical. Um, and only particularly them, because the market was so specifically niche, could they? So you know, you've just you know, plainly honest and 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 and, and no bullshit. Um, we'll do some PPC. We'll sort out the the structure of your site. 
but when it comes to actually producing any content, I can help you market that content and I can help you push it out there, but you are going to need to produce this. There's just no way in hell that I can find anyone within any kind of cost base that will help you uh, create this. So yeah, you know, each, each client brings a different set of strategies um, and, and ideas that you need to come up with and we throw them around all the time here, you know. Do you pay any attention to Bing, Yandex, Baidu, um, uh, Yahoo? I use the um, I use the webmaster tools, um, and I register obviously for all the webmaster tools. Um, just as you know, informational, but um, and you will you will tend to see how. Um, creating things and working with things through the normal structure of things that they tend to 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 reflect in all the other sites. Um, it's just a natural progression. Does your mother ever ask you that uh, whether you should go out and get a job? <laughs> <laughs> I think my wife always asks me to go out and get a job because you know, if you start trying to tell people what you do, they just they glaze over. You know, if you even if a client comes to you and like they they tweak on a particular subject that you've just you know really excited about and you're trying to discuss something and even the client thinks, oh Jesus, I wish I hadn't asked that. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's been your most uh, outstanding success that you're allowed to talk about? Uh, well, I think I did mention it a couple months back. Um, I just hit the nail on the head with a piece of content uh, for a client, and um, they were a new small scale business averaging uh, between 100 and 150 visits a day. Um, we took that up to 28,000. You know, uh, just it was just the most sweetest piece of content out there, which people picked up on. Um, you know, the 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 amount of links coming back uh, were, were phenomenal. Majority from 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 image, social sharing, and things like this. But um, it was just the sweetest thing. Traffic did level out again, but now our daily traffic sits around about 500 a day mark. So it was just finding that sweet spot, building that little bit more links. Those little bit more natural links have, have really helped it in, in increase in certain particular areas for the with with luxury into it, and it's just really you know so hitting the sweetest nail on the head, um, you know, 100%, 200% traffic increase um, and steady. So you just got to look for the next sweet one. Okay. Um, I've got another question. It's just gone from my head at the moment. Um, no, it's gone. Damn it. Sorry, mate. That's all right, Jim. That's all right, mate. I feel like I've, I've just been waterboarded, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit of fun. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. There's so many people work in so many different ways. It's and, and that's what I love about these hangouts. Everybody jumping in, jumping out. Um, you know, the 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 community itself. You get so many different ideas and point of views from people. It's it's phenomenal, um, and you read comments and you think, ah, oh, you know, I never thought of that. How can I tr take that, translate it into to what I'm doing? Because I think this client would really benefit from something like that. Uh, it it never stops, really. The ideas and, and the flow. It's actually, if you think about, it, I mean, Google Plus. What we're talking three, four years old now. I can't. 2011 uh -huh. uh, June, I think. Um. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's phenomenal, and, and you kind of think back and like, well, how did I, how did I operate beforehand? <laughs> mm. um, yeah, it's 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 a massive flow of information, and uh, um, it's yeah, it's really interesting. As soon as I joined Google Plus, the very same day, I sent an email 
a, a form letter email to every one of our clients um, saying they just had to join, set up their details. Um, um, I said this this is the way, way that I must dig that email out because uh, I reckon I was sort of you know a bit prophetic in it. But um, anyway, uh, I sent that email out to about 200 odd, 220 odd people, and I think about three of them have joined Google Plus. And you know, no, I, no. I, I said to them, "Your life depends on this. Um, you've just got to do it." But um, about three of them have joined. I think. I yeah. think one of them's left as well. <laughs> Same experience. I mean, I think I must have sent out 50. Um, I even sent, uh, created a little PDF thing, <laughs> where to log into, how to do it, what to click. You know, did the whole little PDF, sent it out to about 50 odd. I think we've got three or four. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Anyone I take on now, the first job is create your, you know, Google Plus, create your personal profile, we're attaching your business onto that, whether you want to do it depending on what they are, whether they're a business brand organization, has to be done, rel publisher, um, local listing to the address, you know, these, these are just like the first things now, absolutely the first thing, um, and, it's, and it's right, you know, I want five minutes a day out of you, um, because that's the thing with small businesses, finding the time, you know, all of a sudden you're talking to them about content and Google Plus and, you know, they're thinking, Jesus Christ, where's, where, where am I going to get this time? Um, and, you know, literally all I want out of you is five minutes out of your day so you could be eating your sandwich and looking at your um, Google Plus business page. Minimum five minutes a day, that's what I want out of you. And what you'd find is... The, the first the first two months is pretty much excruciating. You need to push them, remind them. You need to say, hey, listen, I didn't. I logged into the account today, and I didn't see you hadn't plus one to anyone. You haven't you haven't commented on anyone's post. You haven't posted anything today. Um, and the first two months is like pulling teeth. But when they start getting that little bit of engagement coming through, and they and 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 they realize, Jesus, there's actually people out there that want to know things. And then you start chatting, and then they start chatting. And then, I mean, most clients, after those first two months, is like putting teeth. But then once they get into it, they get that first bit of engagement, off they go. Off they go, and, uh, you know, great stuff. And you see them spending more and more time on it. And, yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted to ask before that had gone from my mind. Uh, you did the offline uh, exercise with Godiva chocolates um, with a big launch. Uh, tell us about that. Uh, yeah, that was that was really good. I mean, obviously, um, they have a PR company, which which is fantastic if you can afford it. It's brilliant because uh, you know we work. I work with a. Um, uh, with the PR company, so basically anything that's going on offline can be optimized. So whether they're sending out um, releases, whether they're sending out images, whether they're sending out um, PDFs, uh, requests for information, everything has the potential to uh, to be optimized, and they are really great at that. The the um, the actual uh, launch itself uh, combined sort of you know online and offline media which um, you know has has, has, you know, has just been has, has just been brilliant um, the amount of um, social media engagement from the event because you know it was really well integrated with it has been great the, um, the links let alone from the social media has done well um, the press itself, um, because they were at the event and it was, you know, it was a good session, a good few hours, and there was different things going on. The images coming out of there uh, from 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 different press, um, both online and offline, um, really great. And you know, traffic, we've we've you know, 100% increased this month. Um, and we've got a few more things. Obviously, Easter coming up, and we've got a we've got a lot of online, in store, and online activities planned for um, Easter. 
uh, so we you know everything needs to work hand in hand and it, it, it's just this is the first time honestly actually that these uh, I've worked really well with a PR company I mean these guys are great um, if they if they have an idea if they have a question they're always emailing me um, they'll send it across to me I'll have it to be kind of say hey <laughs> you know just little things like where's the URL <laughs> <laughs> we need the site in there. We need a URL in there. Come on, um, but guys are brilliant, and if they just really taken taken to it, um, taken it on board, and um, yeah, it, it's just it's just working perfectly at the minute. So I don't want to rock the boat. <laughs> Do you ever wish um, that you were running your own website uh, rather than making other people successful? You know what, Jim? The, the funniest thing is, is um, we we all have our little play websites, don't we? Um, and and every month you go, ah, you know what? I need to I need to sort that out. I need to sort it out. And then every month someone else phones you. You've got another two site reviews to do for potential clients. You have another client that has a meltdown. Um, who deletes half his pages? <laughs> um, you get another client that accidentally 404s everything, and your own site never gets sorted. It's like a builder, mate. Their house, their own home, is never finished. And and you know, every month I say to myself, I've got three sites sitting there. I need to get sorted because they are absolute gold mines. And every month <laughs> you never get it done. Well, that, that leads me to another question. Will you ever um, update um, the page on, on onlineownership.com that we have displayed on uh, uh, the SEO questions community on Google Plus? Yes, that's going to be done in the next 30 days, I hope to God. <laughs> and so uh, yeah. Yeah, we just have to make this statement true because it's linked as uh, Tim Kappa's Basics for Business SEO. Oh mate, um, <laughs> what are you doing? You've seen that link, there, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, have I? I don't know. <laughs> okay, it, it's um, it's just this. I mean, I put it there um, on on the oh, community yes, yes. On, on Google Plus because yeah, yeah. you know they're, they're basic questions that are asked, and so I put in Google's SEO starter guide, the Moz SEO starter guide, and um, I thought yours should be there, but. I must admit, yeah. I, I think I looked at that page in 2011 when I first saw it, and it, it seemed pretty fresh at the time, and I, I was absolutely clueless. I haven't changed much, uh, but then, then again, neither is your page. Exactly, but we're going to have to make a change now because that needs to have all, all the new business details and contact details and what we do for you on there within the next ooh, 30 days. Um, and, of course, all the content that I've tried to maintain and you know updates that I've done on uh, Google Plus business pages that site's going to come down and all that content and I'm just going to keep one site up to date now so yeah within the next 30 days Jim we should um, <laughs> we should have something going on we'll have to put Masataki in the hot seat one day I'd love to know what he does yeah yeah Uh -oh. <laughs> what we should do um, is make a cut of that and um, put it on Google Plus. Is opening a new agency and looking for new clients. What do you reckon? Yeah, yeah. Mm, I'll do that. Depends how it sounds. You'll need to check it back first. I might have sounded like a tit. No, it was great, uh, Tim. Really? Oh, you answered okay. every question. Uh, it was you answered them fair. The, the thing that surprised me, the, the thing that surprised me was that you sounded like you knew what you're talking about. Holy moly, mother of no! 